chair recognizes Senator Mitchell. Uh, but you know, <laughs> you know they say, you hold that down. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Um, you know what they say. I saw a, uh, a meme, I think is what they call them these days, that said, you must speak up even if your voice shakes. And I add to that, when your voice is all you have, use your voice. I never forget it. Uh, when you are, Madam uh, President, the Chancellor, or as the Spanish say, the Cancellier, you have the opportunity to whisper into the king's ear. And you, as the chancellor, get to design the execution in words of all that takes place. It caused me to think of Cardinal Wolsey who is, gave a very uh, long speech, it appears, on his deathbed <laughs> way back in 1530. And he said, if I had served my God as diligently as I had served my king, then he would not have left me in my gray hairs. And I think all of us as public servants have to remember that. And I raise that because every time I see one of these new orders come out, I remember the starting point of all of this way back on the 17th of March when our position was this was not necessary, that this could be done another way. We were convinced to vote for the first extension because there appeared to be a cogent case made by reason of the science that this had to be imposed. But pretty soon, one week, one day after the next, there was this order, the next order, the other order, the third order, the fourth order, with exceptions and exceptions and exceptions, to the point where, I guess it was last week, I found one of these memes that, you know, said that they had found the government's orders. And it was actually what we called when we were children, foul scratch. Because you don't actually know w what belongs to what and where to where. I mean, the police officers who met me on the street, I think shortly after one of these orders was put in place that you had to walk around with government ID. So they were assigned to stand on the corner as the cars pass by lean into the car and say, do you have ID? So you take out your ID, and they say, okay, you can pass along. And that was the use of police time in the middle of this pandemic. And I'm a libertarian at heart, uh, a minimalist at heart with regard to the interference of government in the liberties of citizens and have always argued and continue to argue that you have to be very careful when you give carte blanche to the executive to exercise the kinds of powers that they're now exercising. When you think about this, the executive is empowered under Article 29 to simply have the Governor General sign an order which suspends civil liberties for 14 days in the first instance. And then when the 14 days are up, the parliament gets the right to look at it and you can extend it. And we have been engaged in that process uh, now since, uh, since March. And here's what it suspends. It suspends the provisions which prevent forced labor. It suspends Article 19 and has special provisions for dealing with people in detention. And I can tell you that there was a 
bitterness which exists to this very day when Michael Manley imposed a state of emergency in Jamaica in the 1970s and politicians ended up being arrested during that state of emergency. And then it suspends Article 20, except the provision which deals with you can't create an offense which wasn't an offense before, uh, before these provisions came into place. And then it suspends Article 21, which is the provision on privacy of your home and the ownership of your property. It suspends Article 22 on the question of your conscience, freedom of conscience. It suspends Article 23, freedom of expression. It suspends Article 24, freedom of assembly. It suspends Article 25, the freedom of movement, and this one is one that I pointed out at the very start, because we don't have Senator Clay Sweeting here today. He's been unable to come to the Senate, a place where he's supposed to be when the Senate is convened. We've been told that he has, to, he has the right to come, but yesterday, in an, in an exchange across the floor with the minister who was leading uh, the government's business yesterday, um, I pointed out that my understanding was from the, an earlier intervention by the Attorney General that a Senator and a Member of Parliament could not be sub subject to these regulations because of the constitutional position. But the Minister said, I don't see it anywhere in the regulations. And I told him I didn't see it either. But I make that point because Senator Darvill has been here in Nassau for 10 weeks, unable to return to his home. And now we're being told, if we read these regulations, that in order for Senator Darvill to go home, he has to go somewhere to some doctor who's not his doctor to get some test or some, something he has to go through. And then he has to apply to this person and apply to the next person. All the while, commercial travel has not been resumed in the Bahamas. I, I wonder how Western Air is going to survive having not flown a single passenger in 10 weeks. And this is the constant uh, back and forth, this balancing act between life and livelihood. So that one in particular, freedom of movement, and then Article 26, it also suspends the protections against discrimination. We already know that you can discriminate against women in our law, and the Bahamian public apparently agrees with that. But, I'm sorry, I'm saying the Bahamian public agrees with it, agrees with it twice on two occasions. They agree with discrimination against women. No, no problem. And I agree. I, I was only saying the Bahamian public agrees with it. Uh, but, you know, all the other things, politics, race, all of those have gone out of the window under 26. So, there was an order which came, I think it was last week, which suspends the local government elections. This local government democracy has the, the, the elections, I think, were scheduled for June. Right for June, so they're now, time has stopped running, and according to the regime of the order, the elections won't take place at that time, uh, but will take place once the emergency period is done, and then the elections will take place, and I think the terms are, will still last up to the usual three-year term, it won't go through that, so I, I imagine that those people who are elected will have their terms truncated by the period uh, beyond uh, that, that, the, that the emergency uh, goes, into their, goes into their term. The Attorney General might tell you that as soon as I saw this regime, I sent him a question. I said, aha, what does this mean for the general election? Because if you can suspend local government elections, can you suspend general elections? And his reply was, no, that can't happen. I reminded him that there are arguments, there were arguments in the Caribbean over this, in Grenada in particular, where 
there, I, I'm told that their constitution actually allows for, has provisions which allow for time to stop running once an emergency proclamation is in place. And so I'm advised again that that provision does not apply here. But St. Kitts is having a general election on the 5th of June. 5th of June, yeah, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of the, the state of emergency. And the opponents of the incumbents are arguing that what has happened is the emergency is supposed to end on the 6th of June, that they have a lot of overseas voters. And these overseas voters uh, would have to return to St. Kitts to participate in the election, except that the borders are closed until the 6th of June. So the election is being held on the 5th of June so that the international, the diaspora can come in to vote. Of course, their argument is that this is being done deliberately because support amongst the diaspora is high for the opposition and not for the incumbents. So you see the kind of mischief that this stuff can, can get up to. And I'm flagging all of these issues to the Bahamian public today. Madam President, two or two days ago, pictures started coming in somewhere in the afternoon of floods in Bimini, in Sandbank in Abaco, in Sweetings Key, and Moores Island. Water came into people's homes ankle deep as a result of rains that came that afternoon. There was a tornado, it appears, which touched down in Deadman's Reef in Grand Bahama, which knocked down some poles, damaged some roofs. And it immediately caused us to think, particularly when I saw the flooding in Sandbank where they had been, where the houses had been replaced as a result of the hurricane damage. This question of preparedness to deal with what is coming in the future. And I hark back to the fact that when this emergency was first put in place, the argument was that the reason for these measures was to slow down the rate of infection, to give the authorities the opportunity to prepare the hospital to be able to deal with any cases which came forward. The evidence is that that is not, in fact, the case. That's the evidence. And this that happened with the floods caused me to raise that as an issue. If that was the rationale, then the hospital services at this point should be adequately prepared to deal, particularly if you say that the science is telling us that the curve is flattened, odd expression that the curve is flattened. If that is the case, then we should in fact be adequately prepared to deal with any emergency of that nature. And that is why the people in Eleuthera, in the Berry Islands, in San Salvador, in Exuma, are all asking if the science is directing you what to do, why are we still closed? If the science is directing you what to do, why are we still closed? Because they can't see any distinction between no cases in Maikau and no cases in Exuma. No cases in Cat Island and no cases in the Barry Islands. Madam President, if the science is directing you, why are they still closed? And then you have the situation with the funerals and the church, all of which now have been adjusted uh, within the last day, where I'm advised now that the numbers for funerals have been increased to 30 from 10 
and uh, the, the churches can now enter into the sanctuary. But I thought it was very curious that an order would be drawn to actually tell churches how to celebrate the Eucharist. I thought, well, this is very strange for a government to be venturing into explaining that you can't, you, you can't use a cup, that you can only use individual uh, containers, and you can only, you know, you, you, there, can, there can only be one, I think you can't hand the basket around, all of those things, but it was the communion that really struck me. Because clearly, if you make such a decision to that, that is, I understand what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. But what you're doing is you're telling the Catholics and the Anglicans what to do in their service. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Well, I, I understand. I, I understand reasonably justify. Reason no, I, I understand all of that. I understand all of that. My responsibility, my duty is to say, you, you, you vent, I, 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 think, I, I understand. I understand. Let, let, me, let me tell you what Wolsey said to the fellow on his deathbed, since you want to use this at the end, too. It says, yeah, no, because you're the chancellor. You're the one who gets to whisper in the air. You're in a very powerful position. And you, and you, can, you can, you know, it, it, just seems, it, ju it just seems like um, this is an exercise in someone who likes to pull wings off butterflies. Let's, let's do an order today that says this. Let's do an order tomorrow that says that, right? And Wolsey says this. Wolsey says this. I warn you to be well advised and assured what matter you put in the king's head, for you shall never be able to put it out again. <laughs> for the record, if I may, if I may, for the record, um, I, I resemble that remark. <laughs> As we say, <laughs> let me say, let me say definitively now, you know, if you make a statement of fact I at this table, it has to be true. I assure you that the, the, um, the idea for, for individual um, presentation of the communion elements was not mine, <laughs> but, I embraced, but, I embraced, but I embraced the idea. Um, I, I embrace the idea. Uh, I have drafts persons who think they, they, are, they, they are much more, uh, how should I say with my, the drafting law reform, they are, they are like the guardians at the gate. See? That's what I could say, okay? And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I know it wasn't me. It either came from them or it came from the king. <laughs> no, it came from the king, but I warmly embraced it. I, I, I can't quite, I have to check my email and see where it came from. <laughs> yeah, Shaggy said that too. <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> no, no, I said Shaggy said it. that was his line. It wasn't me. Yeah, it's a song, I know. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, but, you know, um, I say we, we had the experience of the Commission of Inquiry in this country which said that, you know, the agent, the agent cannot say my principal ordered me to do it. That's not a defense. The principal, the agent cannot say, my principal ordered me to do it. Uh, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. No, no. You whisper in his ear, and sometimes you speak for him. Certainly in this place you speak for him. You do. So, uh, I am saying to you that that is where people are at this juncture is that they see all of this going around. But as we said a couple of weeks ago, the government is in danger of losing the people on this one in the sense that people are saying, look, th this doesn't make sense to us. And when that happens, people just stop following the rules. Because I, I see all this stuff about the stores opening, but people open these stores a long time. I mean, they weren't waiting on you. The stores are open. And the police simply cannot, the police simply cannot keep up with it. Yes, they are. I can assure you. I can assure you. You know, the parks are supposed to be closed. The parks are supposed to be closed. You go to Freedom Park now. See if, see if that park is closed. 
I mean, you know, that, that's, that's just the fact of life. And, and to enforce it becomes difficult. And, and I wish to, to, to speak of what's been happening in Fox Hill over the last few days. I mean, there been there was a shooting which led to a death yesterday. There was another shooting today. Uh, and I in just discussed it yesterday, and there was, and there's a shooting too. I, I, I understand that, but, but, but the subtext through all of this is the more people are pressured to be inside and cooped up, is what I'm saying, is that you have to think that that may also have to do with people being a short fuses, the more pressure you put on people. So, the, the, all we've said through all of this is, look, you have to bring the people along with you and use persuasion and not coercion. And, you know, like a broken record, we go to the penalties that have been imposed. Uh, the Attorney General, at a sidebar today, assured me that the necessary representations have been made on these penalties which caused such outrage in one case where a man 18 years of age was charged and convicted of selling coconuts as a coconut vendor 300 plus 407 even to the point where certain family members of us in this place decided that they had to defer from that decision and to say, I don't agree. And the public itself was outraged that that should be the case, that this could actually happen while this is, this is going on. Now, there all, as, as we, made, we made the point, there are all sorts of penalties in between that this could happen. But I, I was just reminded <coughs> of the case today. Again, you were just reading from newspaper accounts. These aren't the court accounts. But here you have a man, I think it's two men, who go to the water pump, the government water pump, to get water. And the reason they went to the pump is because a relative of theirs got loose bowels. Um, I forget the medical term for it, but incontinent and created a mess at home. They have no running water in the home. They went to get water from the pump to clean up. Arrested it, taken to court, pleads guilty, charged $250 each. You know, th th this is just off. And at all levels, from the police, to the prosecutors, to the magistrates, discretion should be the better part of valor in these things because what it's doing unnecessarily is criminalizing people and also building up hatred toward our system, which it should not do. And then, of course, from that's, <clears throat> that's the penalties. Uh, then, of course, you have the political activity. We have a responsibility, or we believe, as an opposition party, we have a responsibility for the entire Bahamas. The national leadership of our party has not been able to land in Grand Bahama in 10 weeks. I usually go there every Friday for three days and then come back to Nassau to be engaged because it is, it, it is important. It's, it's not, you, you know, Zoom can't help you. Um, it's important to be in these places as national leaders so people can engage with you, but also so you can actually see and feel what's happening in these places. And that's not been possible in 10 weeks. In theory, <coughs> if I'm to accept the Attorney General at his word, I should be able to jump on the plane and go. But I've chosen not to test it. Because in the larger scheme of things, we want to demonstrate to the public that we are not trying to undermine the rules and take advantage of any special status. So thus, 
I haven't had a haircut in 10 weeks. But since everyone has now arrived at the position where we now, we were 10 weeks ago, which is that this virus is going to be around for a while and we got to live with it, it's clear. We have to adjust our protocols to the realities of that fact. I know, but it's taken us 10 weeks to get there, something which was obvious 10 weeks ago. Well, I, 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 I grant you the thing about the healthcare system, and I, and I said to you, well, the 10 weeks have gone, nothing's been done by the healthcare system, so you can't use that argument. We're still at the same place we were 10 weeks ago with the healthcare system. You're still the same place you were. Ten weeks ago, you're still the same place you were. Ten weeks ago. Ten weeks ago, you're still the same place. Still the same place. Ten weeks ago. You know? Ten weeks ago. But anyhow, anyhow, we are now at the point where it appears we all agree, we all agree that this virus is going to be around forever. And that we have to adjust our lives to the fact, to that fact. And I heard... I heard, I, I think, I heard Dr., sorry, Senator Davel speaking yesterday, and I think I've already mentioned it, what he has to go to to get back home. And I'm saying, as a national chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, I need to be in Grand Bahama. And am I going to go through that? You know, I've got, first I've got to go see a doctor I don't know uh, to be cross-examined by my private business with a doctor I don't know. I mean, do I really want to do that? I've, I've, uh, I have a, a, an annual medical appointment overseas, which I've had to cancel because there are no commercial flights available between here and the U.S. Well, you know, again, again, if I'm to take you at your word, it doesn't apply to me. If I'm to take you at your word. You know? Well, I mean, Parliament will certainly be meeting. Well, yes, the Parliament will be certainly meeting. It's got to meet at least again. That's fine. That's fine what you say. I agree with you, I'm saying. So on Parliament Day, in Parliament Day, I'm trying to get back home, right? And you're saying that I can't because i got to be in quarantine for 14 days. That's what you're saying. I'm saying Parliament Day is going to come someday. So it generally applies. <laughs> it generally applies. So... I'm saying, again, you have to make some adjustments uh, to that as well. And all I say is that the Health Act and other acts give you sufficient power to deal with all of these issues without the need for this emergency proclamation. And then I'm glad you mentioned Labor because Labor Day is the 5th of June. And I have been in Grand Bahama for Labor Day since 1977, almost every year, since 1977. Right, that's where I go. That, that, that's, you know, but, but again, so, but the way this is constructed, it appears there's not going to be any Labor Day public celebrations because, because of this. Yeah, I, I, I understand, but you know, um, Labor Day is an important day in the history of the country. I was just engaged in an argument where someone was trying to equate the contribution of Randall Fox with another individual at the time of majority rule. And I mean, I just became apoplectic that they could equate, uh, <laughs> you know, Sir Randall Fox's role with anyone else. Point of, point of no, 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 no. No, 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 I, I, I don't want to say because I'd be telling tales of it. Senator Moss. Yes, um, Madam President, thank you so much. Uh, just for the edification of my good co Senator colleague across <coughs> the floor. Um, one of the reasons why we're not going to have um, Labor Day March, the unions already made a decision that we're not going to have this uh, parade because at the end of the year we are concerned about the safety of our members with respect to them contracting the COVID-19. So at the end of the day, I, I heard earlier in, an, in the other house where a member tried to 
cast blame on the government, but now I just want to make it very clear to the being people that it was not the government. The, the union made a, a conscious decision, a meeting that I, which I was a part of, that we made a, a conscious decision in the, in the best interest of our members to not have Labor Day this year because of the fears of COVID-19 and, and what it could do to our membership. So at the end of the day, we just want that to be out there and we just wish that you and your colleagues would respect that. Look here, I was speaking as a citizen of the Bahamas. The unions can decide whatever the unions want to do. I'm just telling you, the 5th of June is Labor Day. And I celebrate Labor Day. I, I can, I can. No, it, but you see, this is the problem, right? I, 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 had this, I, had, I had this with younger people all the time. They're always trying to prescribe what you must do or what we must be part of a group. You know, don't try to prescribe what I must do. I, I do what I want to do. I'm a, I'm a free agent and individual. You know, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm on, I'm only, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You know, these, these, these are freedoms. These are freedoms people fought for. They fought for very hard for them. You know, and you don't just, you don't just dispense with them. That's fine. I'm saying I, I hear all of that, and you and you weigh weigh that in the balance. But I'm saying to you, right? Did you mean to tell me I can't even get up and say in the Senate I think we ought to celebrate Labor Day? I'm gonna sit down and shut up because the unions decided they're not margin. That's what you're telling me? No, but that's the effect of it. That's the effect of it. No, that's the effect of it. That's the effect of it. Um, that's the effect of it. Senators, can, can we not have a back and forth and that's allow the Senator Mitchell to finish? That's the effect of it. Think of what you're saying. Think of what you're saying. Okay, Senator Beth, we're on the point of order. It is offensive for the member opposite to, to cast an aspersion when a point of clarification of fact was being brought forward. The member opposite made a suggestion that the government is just all of its own because someone whispered I in the king's no ear. Let's take the analogy. I, that is your suggestion. I, on the point of the government I is just no acting suggestion. on its own. I made no such suggestion. I made no such suggestion. We have a member on their mind. No such suggestion. I made no such suggestion. Didn't come out of my mouth. You were making no such And he answered you. Please. Madam President, when the member on um, uh, um, Senator Moss answered him with the facts, he then offensively, just now, accused Senator Moss of trying to shut him down merely by giving him the facts. Take the facts, go on with your speech, and any time you come with a misstatement, you will be corrected. Look here, the day I take a lecture from you is the day pigs get wings. Well, they mustn't fly in now. No, no, no. They crashed in the ground. That's what happened. You know, fucking fool. Not today. Not in here 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 today. And let's hear on the point of order, please. Not in here today. Not in here today. Okay, okay. Senator Mitchell, you have the floor. No, I am expressing my right to speak. I told you before. You don't have if you have your voice, you use your voice. And don't prescribe for me what I must do and say. Do not prescribe for me what I must do and say. <laughs> Which you just did. Which you just did. You just did. You just did. That's the implication of what you said. Okay. No, don't try and do that. Don't try and do that. Don't try and do that. Exactly. So, that's the reason, Madam President, we can't give support to this. This yes. foul scratch of regulations, which you can't, not, not, you know, you know, this, that, you know, you don't know where you are from day to day, you know? And I warn you, I, I, I can end with Woolsey again. Yeah. No, the, the general. I'm not warning you specifically. I advise you. Let me use that word. I advise that you. I advise you. Yeah. Woolsey said on his deathbed, I warn you, be well advised. Be well advised and assured what matter you put in the king's head, for you shall never put it out again. Thank you.